In the early 20th century, the ideal of leisure time for all gains ground. Recreation is no longer considered to be a luxury. The elite behind the various reform movements, very active during this period, want more people to be entitled to free time. Reformers fighting for the development of recreational activities, especially for children, see in them a way to resolve social tensions, improve morals and living conditions, and beautify cities. Gardens, parks, playing fields, libraries and public baths are built to provide city dwellers, ever growing in number and diversity, with places to relax and have fun. This is the Belle Epoque, when optimism is at its height. The Canadian economy is flourishing. Population growth is unprecedented. The Belle Epoque is also a time of paradox. The wealth and opulence of the elite contrast sharply with the misery and harsh living conditions of the less fortunate. Victorian morals and the strict separation of men's and women's roles run up against modern reality, with ever more numerous opportunities for mixing. It is in the area of leisure activities that the changes in attitudes and the relations between the sexes are most noticeable. The locations of new pastimes such as amusement parks, movie theaters, and dance halls, are all great meeting places. These pastimes appeal particularly to young people, as they seek to escape parental authority and enjoy their own kinds of fun in their own kinds of places. As a new century begins, leisure is largely relieved of moral connotations. Games and recreational activities are celebrated for the benefits they provide. Which activities are most popular at the time? What games do people play in parks and playing fields? Do people really have more time for recreation? Although leisure is now an integral part of everyday life, opportunities for recreation are nevertheless still limited by time and money. <music> 